Ladies and gentlemen, let me wholeheartedly welcome you to the new course, the EC302 Digital Communication. So first I will uh, discuss of course how it comes, uh, then we will uh, discuss what is in the syllabus and uh, then uh, I'll give a brief overview of uh, digital communication. So let me start with that presentation. So in this video, uh, first uh, I will give you your learning outcomes, then uh, what are the course outcomes, then a brief overview of the subject, then we will discuss the history of uh, digital communication systems, then we will uh, see the fundamental problem in communication and then uh, we will see the summary of understanding. So what you will learn in this video are you will uh, first understand the course outcomes. Then you will learn the need for uh, uh, learning digital communication. Then you will learn the tools for implementing a digital communication system. We will be utilizing these tools uh, for simulations and implementations. Then uh, you will learn the history of uh, digital communication. Then you will learn the fundamental problem in communication and appreciate how the syllabus addresses it. Besides what is in the, given in the syllabus, we have written uh, some more course outcomes for this uh, uh, paper. So first is an apply level thing or the third level of uh, uh, understanding that is apply a knowledge of probability, random variables and random process to LTI systems. So this happens in the first module. Then in the second module, you will understand the various uh, source coding schemes. In the third module, you will apply the knowledge of ISI problems. It is again a, an outcome in the apply category. Uh, you will apply the knowledge of ISI problems to derive the Nyquist cr criterion for zero ISI. Then the third is uh, you will apply the Gram-Schmidt uh, procedure to develop uh, optimum receivers. Then in the uh, fourth module, you will compare the digital modulation schemes in terms of the probability of error. Then in the last uh, uh, two modules, you will understand uh, some applications, that is the basics of uh, spec spectrum and uh, wireless communication. So these are the course outcomes. Then why you learn this paper? Uh, if you look back, uh, you can see that uh, communication engineering is the one uh, engineering that had sig explosive growth. Uh, it uh, uh, grew full swing in around 70 years. Uh, no other engineering uh, has uh, had such a, a tremendous growth. So much of the mobile communication, the internet computing, the entertainment industry and military communication, they depend on digital communication systems. And uh, there are uh, many job opportunities uh, in the wireless communication uh, sector sector if you have practical understanding of digital communication system, wireless communication and uh, signal processing. Uh, mo most of the signal processing has uh, uh, great applications in wireless communication. So if you look into your mobile phones, uh, uh, what makes the reception possible are the uh, very good adaptive signal processing algorithms. So if, if, you, are, uh, if you understand uh, these uh, three, the three combinations and if you uh, know how to implement practical systems then you have uh, many job opportunities in the field of uh, wireless communication. Now we will be implementing these things. This is, uh, th there will be many simulations, uh, demos and uh, computer based assignments etc. in this paper. So they will be uh, done with uh, Python and uh, GNU radio. So uh, if you are not familiar with the Python, I will give some separate sessions for that. Then uh, as for the hardware, I will try to give you some training on the uh, SDR boards uh, because there are low cost SDR boards, so software defined radio boards available uh, from ETAS, uh, LIME, etc. So some of these boards uh, uh, you can familiarize in this course. So as for the learning material and uh, approach to course, if I say the textbook is uh, Communication Systems by Simon Hakin, and another uh, good reference, uh, it's a great reference, that is Digital Communication by John D. Park, it's a YD edition. And uh, then you can do the problems from the book, uh, Analog and Digital Communication, a Shom series by Sue. 
And you can do some implementations, especially that of the MULO encoder, the ALO encoder, uh, etc. Uh, such telephonic systems uh, from the book uh, uh, Digital Telephones by Bellamy. Then uh, uh, this, this, much of this uh, online course, uh, the material everything will be distributed through Google Classroom. So most of you have already joined that. Uh, and uh, uh, the policy is that I will publish the course videos uh, prior to online session. So uh, students are advised to watch these videos before attending classes. So again, Python based, Python or GNU-Rate based simulations will be used for demonstration. Most of the uh, systems uh, under study will be uh, demonstrated to you. And uh, your assignments will be simulations in Python and uh, or, and or GNU-Rate. If you look back into the history of uh, digital communication system, you know, the first electrical communication, when we say communication systems, we are invariably talking about uh, uh, electrical communication systems. And uh, uh, if you uh, look into electrical communication systems, uh, the first electrical communication system was a digital uh, system that was a telegraph. So it used uh, discrete uh, uh, messages for uh, communication. So much of the uh, developments in communication are possible because of the uh, developments in probability, random variables, and uh, random process. In the 18th century, there was a great development, uh, great progress in uh, mathematics, that is in probability, random variables, and stochastic process. So the first uh, electrical communication system I told you was a, the, it was a not an analog one, but a digital one. It was a telegraph that used the dots and dashes. Uh, it was actually something called uh, an entropy code, uh, called Morse code. Uh, to communicate. So when you say an entropy code, we will see this in detail, but uh, if you say what an entropy code is, uh, see that's a code that, that, that uses different uh, length of code words. Uh, the most frequent symbols will be used, the uh, smallest code and uh, the most infrequent uh, symbol will be used, the longest code. Uh, say for example, an E may be used as the smallest uh, symbol, a dot, and uh, some other uh, say something like Z, uh, it may be using uh, a longer code word. So th that code was called entropy code. Now, now nowadays Morse code, uh, earlier it was used in uh, shipping industry, but uh, the, uh, from that also it is removed, it is no longer available. And uh, it gave it way to, then uh, one problem with the, this discrete system called the telegraph was that you are getting a wire or you are getting a discrete message. Uh, the people were not very happy with that. Uh, so people wanted to talk to each other, so that gave way to analog telephony. So when Graham Bell invented the, uh, the telephony, uh, analog uh, telephony came to picture. So people could uh, talk to each other. So one problem was then uh, more as more uh, telephones were uh, connected in each cities, uh, it was needed to connect them together. So, uh, but. Uh, now, say if I say uh, I have two cities, say city A and city B, each of them say 50,000 phones, uh, then I can I needn't connect all the telephone all uh, telephones uh, 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 together because uh, uh, that that will be a wastage of resources because I don't uh, talk all the time. So calls originate uh, randomly, and then only you need connect. So. Uh, it is not wise to connect all the 50,000 phones in one city with the other 50,000 phones in another city. That is not possible. So instead, uh, people design switches or uh, something called AN exchange or uh, digital exchanges in between these uh, uh, phones so that uh, when a call originates, uh, uh, it connects to uh, that that's some line or trunk uh, is connected to that uh, call and uh, it is uh, uh, completed at the other end. Okay. So that was a wise policy. Now, what happened is uh, when uh, these exchanges uh, came, uh, this wiring problem came because you had to connect uh, uh, many switches and uh, uh, it, it was very difficult. Even, even, to, even these days, if you go to a local exchange, uh, if you look at the front end wiring, you can see that it is in intimidatingly big. So you can imagine uh, what would be the complex, you can imagine the type of complexity they had when uh, uh, they were using discrete uh, components. So again in the circuit domain also it was a problem because uh, wiring uh, so many components on a board and uh, wiring them together that, 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 uh, uh, that, that, uh, that resulted in quite a nightmarish arrangement of wires harnessing them all. So th this uh, problem, this wiring problem was solved by a technician in the, uh, uh, a technician called Jack Hilby. Uh, he, he 
was in Texas. He was a technician in Texas Instruments. So he thought in a different way. He, he didn't have much of the formal education or uh, like a big degrees or anything. So, and he had less prejudices also. So what he thought was, okay, the problem are the wires. So why can't we get rid of these wires? Why can't we fabricate them together? So he fabricated a circuit. Uh, 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 actually, he fabricated the, an AC phase shift oscillator uh, on single wafer and uh, uh, he recorded it in the uh, company that is uh, Texas Instruments logbook, uh, he wrote it. So uh, as soon as uh, the circuit worked, he saw the oscillations on uh, the CRO, uh, he noted it in the logbook of uh, uh, Texas Instruments. For that uh, uh, entry in the logbook, he was awarded the Nobel Prize many years later. So it was the invention of the integrated circuit. So what happens is the complexity of the, uh, so we could, we could, people could fabricate these circuits together, so that reduces the complexity of wiring. So what happens is these integrated circuits modernizes then electromechanical switches, because at that time in exchanges, people were using electromechanical switches called uh, Strauger switches. So uh, it was quite a, a hellish uh, nightmare to wire uh, these things together. So the, the ICs modernized this, uh, the then electromechanical switches, so the uh, exchanges became compact. And at the same time, there were developments in electromagnetics, antennas, uh, et cetera. But that was happening over a, a century. And uh, that also added to the growth of uh, communication industry. And uh, one landmark uh, thing was in 1948, a French mathematician called Claude Shannon, uh, uh, who is believed to be the f father of all information theory, communication, computing, and everything. Uh, he published uh, three theorems, uh, two source coding theorems, and. Uh, Two channel and one channel coding theorem in 1948. Uh, th that was a landmark uh, discovery. It was a very groundbreaking discovery that revolutionized the communication. So that uh, that paper is called the mathematical uh, theory of uh, communication. I already put it in the Google Classroom. Uh, anyone, any any communi uh, all communication students, you should uh, uh, read uh, uh, Claude Shannon's paper, the mathematical theory of communication. So that uh, revolutionized, the, those three theorems revolutionized uh, the communication industry the same way uh, Newton's three laws uh, of physics uh, that, uh, that, that revolutionized uh, physics and mechanics. And uh, Claude Shannon, he developed a measure of informational randomness, okay. So many, many people were uh, trying to uh, have a quantitative measure for informational randomness. We will we'll come to all these terms in great detail as we go along this course. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, there were rapid advances in metallurgy. Uh, see, these metallurgical engineers contributed a lot to integrated circuits. Even though uh, they didn't get the credit, they were they they, they, they never got the credit for that. But uh, the metallurgy engineers they uh, they they developed the methods for purifying material. So that uh, that triggered a lot of developments in integrated circuit fabrication and optical fibers. Uh, because uh, make, uh, pure optical fibers, it was very difficult to remove the water content from optical fibers for some time. Then the metallurgy people developed uh, many methods uh, that resulted in uh, removal of water content from uh, optical fibers. And optical fibers uh, uh, revolutionized the communication industry. It is due to these optical fibers that internet became a reality. Uh, that is, uh, in the 90s, uh, I think it was in 1994, uh, they, uh, uh, they, they uh, installed the transatlantic and transpacific uh, optic fiber cables. So it is uh, through these optical fiber cables that uh, much of the internet transmission happens. So these two cables are the backbone of the internet. So uh, then, then there was a great uh, revolution, you know, in the uh, in the 90s uh, to the end of 90s. There was uh, mobile. Uh, the, 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 there were a great advance in the mobile communication. So the, the, there are uh, great trends in uh, 5G mobile communication. So the, the, this is a history, if you, if you look back, this is actually a very brief history of the digital communication system. So with that uh, background, let us uh, proceed into what is a fundamental problem in communication. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you say the fundamental problem in communication is that uh, first I have a transmitter, uh, he uh, gives out some message, he transmits something, and it is sent through a channel. So this channel is very noisy, so uh, what happens is, uh, uh, there may be noise, some other effects. So this uh, signal will be uh, corrupted by noise and other effects in the channel. So what the receiver gets is a corrupted copy of the transmitted signal and uh, uh, the receiver does not know what the transmitter has transmitted. So what it can do is it, it has to estimate uh, uh, the 
you transmit a signal based on the observation. What is the observation? That is a received signal. What is the received signal? That is the corrupted copy of the transmitted signal. So based on this observation, it has to estimate the transmitted signal. So for example, um, if it were an aerial class or in this class, if I say, uh, uh, I, I command uh, uh, speak to you, I transmit something to you, uh, you do not know what I am talking, what I am going to talk. Uh, so uh, what, what, what happens is uh, you, 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 uh, you, there's an uncertainty about that. Okay? So likewise, it is uh, happening through a channel. So this transmission is actually happening through the internet. So uh, the, the channel, uh, mostly uh, wide variety of channels are there. Uh, uh, so the, 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 So these channels, there, there are different types of channels, like uh, uh, in analog telephony you had copper wires, in the mobile communication uh, you use the atmosphere as a channel. Uh, then uh, in for the most of the internet transmission you use optical fiber as a channel. Uh, we, we, we will uh, uh, come to this uh, in great detail later. So the problem is transmitters uh, transmit a, a, a something and it is corrupted by them. If there is an ambiguity about what the transmitter has transmitted. Now the receiver gets a corrupted copy of the signal and uh, the receiver uh, makes an estimate of the transmitted signal based on the observation. What is the observation? That is a, a corrupted copy or a noisy version of the transmitted signal. Now let us see how this uh, syllabus addresses uh, these issues. If you look into the syllabus, the first module actually, uh, whatever is this transmitter and receive the signal, they are all either random variables or random processes. So, so the first module uh, deals with uh, random variables and random processes and their interaction with uh, linear time invariant systems. Uh, much of the probably much of the communication theory is just a theory of random process. Uh, so the first module is dedicated to uh, a review of the random variables and process and uh, and the interaction of uh, 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 a random process with the LTI systems. Then the second module it deals with transmission of source symbols with the help of source coding uh, techniques like uh, PCM the the pulse code modulation the adaptive delta modulation the delta modulation. Differential PCM, etc. Many source coding methods are, uh, are discussed in the second module. That says about transmission of source symbols. Now, when it comes to the third, when it comes to the third module, it deals with the effects in the channel, uh, like uh, inter-symbol interference, uh, the additive white Gaussian noise in the channel. So uh, that module, the third module, discusses the ISI and the effect of noise. And the fourth module actually explains. Uh, uh, the design of optimum receiver based on something called a Gram-Schmidt procedure. We will come to that. So Gram-Schmidt procedure is basically a method of orthogonalization of signals. And uh, it is, uh, uh, you, you learn that thing with, a, with the objective of designing optimum receivers. Then the fifth and sixth module, they actually explain the application of digital communication system. The first, uh, the fifth module, that is about the spread spectrum communication and the uh, uh, sixth module uh, uh, is an introduction to wireless communication. So much of the digital communication is used in wireless communication these days. So now I come to the end of this session. So the summary of understanding, here you understood the force outcomes, then you understood the need for uh, digital communication, then you learned the names of tools for implementing digital communication system like the Python programs, the GNU radio, etc. Then you learned the history of uh, digital communication. Then you understood the fundamental problem in communication and you appreciated how the syllabus addresses it. And that is the end of this presentation. I thank you all.